Hello everyone, thanks for joining me virtually for the graduate student seminar. My name is Alec Timpey and I'm a second year biological oceanography PhD student. Today I'll be sharing some of the research I've done over the past year with my advisor, Dr. Brad Seibel. I'm going to start off by quickly going over a few definitions. First, I'm going to discuss the oxygen supply capacity, which we abbreviate as alpha. Oxygen supply describes the sum of functional and chemical processes that transport oxygen into the cells. In complex organisms, oxygen is extracted from the environment by the respiratory system, circulated around the body, and distributed to individual cells where it is used to generate ATP. An animal is considered to have a greater oxygen supply if these processes can extract more oxygen on a mass-specific basis, or if they can remain efficient in low oxygen environments. The oxygen supply capacity describes the maximum amount of oxygen that an animal can extract from its environment when all of these processes are operating as quickly as possible. Athletic species like tuna or hypoxia species like goldfish have high alphas. On the contrary, sedentary or deep sea species that use little oxygen even when it is available, like the vampire squid, have a lower supply capacity. The next question is, how do we determine this experimentally? We use a technique called respirometry in which an animal is placed in a sealed chamber and its oxygen consumption rate is measured over time. Typically, we plot the oxygen consumption rate derived from respirometry data as a function of oxygen partial pressure in the chamber, as it allows us to investigate the metabolic response to hypoxia. Different activity levels have different metabolic rates, and physiologists have named common ones for convenience. And of course, animals that are dead or dying consume little or no oxygen. We typically start a respirometry trial in hyperoxia, meaning the animal has more oxygen than it needs for its given activity level. As oxygen in the steel chamber is consumed, eventually it reaches a hypoxic state where low environmental oxygen limits the animal's metabolic rate. We can also control the animal's activity level by creating a current in the chamber that it swims against. You can think of this as putting the animal on a water treadmill. First, imagine that there is an animal in a chamber that is swimming as hard as it can against a swift current. This mimics exhaustive exercise in nature, such as when the animal may be hunting or evading a predator. As oxygen decreases, there will be some point when the animal can no longer maintain that its swim speed and its metabolic rate will decrease despite being at maximum exertion. This inflection point is called the critical oxygen partial pressure, or peak rate, and it marks the transition between oxygen independence at higher oxygen and oxygen dependence as oxygen falls. There is a limiting oxygen level for any metabolic rate, and it decreases as metabolic rate decreases. The most important takeaway from this slide is the regions below peak rate for any metabolic rate are parallel. The slope of that line is what we measure as the oxygen supply capacity. When determining the precise oxygen supply capacity from respirometry trial, we monitor how the oxygen supply changes over time. Here's a simpler example. The left panel shows what data from an idealized trial might look like. As in the previous example, the animal will maintain a constant metabolic rate until, at some oxygen level, it reached peak rate and its metabolic rate decreased proportionally with falling oxygen levels. Once again, the slope of that dependent region is fixed at the origin and is the oxygen supply capacity. If you want to determine what that oxygen supply capacity is, we measure the oxygen provision over time and find its maximum value. This is plotted on the right panel, like and like oxygen consumption, we plot oxygen provision as a function of environmental oxygen. This oxygen provision, or instantaneous oxygen supply, is calculated as a ratio of oxygen consumption to oxygen partial pressure, so it's y divided by x for the left figure. This value reaches its maximum at peak rate, and that maximum value is the same as the slope on the left figure and is the oxygen supply capacity. This oxygen supply capacity integrates all of the functional processes described earlier, like diffusion and blood oxygen binding, that move oxygen from the environment to the mitochondria in the cells and is maximized when those processes are operating as quickly as possible. However, measurement error in respirometry data can affect the estimation of alpha. In this schematic example, the probe is not calibrated correctly and therefore negative oxygen concentrations were recorded. What calibration error does is shift all of the oxygen measurements, typically to the left. As it is chemically impossible to have negative oxygen concentration, we know that there is an issue. As a result of this calibration error, the calculated oxygen supply capacity is very high and then does not fit the data very well. Looking at the oxygen supply graph on the right reveals why this is the case. The value diverges towards infinity near zero as it appears as though there is a non-zero oxygen consumption when there is no oxygen in the chamber. This results in a very high estimate of the supply capacity because the highest observed oxygen supply is selected. 
Now, if we compare the oxygen provision plot for this example before and after removing this measurement error, we can see that the spike in oxygen provision observed at low oxygen is removed in the observed supply capacity, which is the gray line in the right figure, makes more visual sense with the rest of the data. The profiles on the previous slide showed scenarios where the animal cooperated fully and its exertion rate was constant for the whole experiment. In reality, data can look something like this, where the animal had sporadic periods of activity and rest during the trial. This example is a bit more challenging to identify visually exactly where a peak rate is because of how activity was changing independently from oxygen. Now imagine there was a calibration error in the probe we used, like in the last example. If we were to determine the supply capacity of the trial now that it was shifted towards the left, it would look something like this. Peak rate would appear to be very low, as indicated by the gold star, which would therefore suggest that the animal is quite tolerant of low oxygen. But Using the method I'm about to describe, we can correct the data to eliminate the effect of calibration error by assuming that in every trial, there are two observations that occur when the animal is operating at supply capacity. After the correction, we see that the animal is in this trial reached peak rate twice, once at an intermediate activity level and again at its standard metabolic rate. To show how the correction works, consider the following example data set. The panel on the left shows oxygen consumption rate on the y-axis as a function of oxygen partial pressure on the x-axis, just like before. To determine the correction value, which we call C, we iteratively add small amounts of potential correction values and then determine the oxygen supply of each point. The result is the panel on the right, which is color-coded to match the graph on the left. As the data is shifted from to the right and left, the oxygen supply for each PO2-MO2 data point changes. Where two of these lines cross, the oxygen supply of the two points represented by those lines are the same. The next step is identifying the point with the highest oxygen supply capacity at each potential correction value. In the figure on the left, they are identified by superimposed black dots over the colored ones. Because we are interested in finding intersections that maximize the oxygen supply, we are looking for places where the data point that gives them maximum value changes. We identify these places by taking the second derivative of the piecewise function defined by those black points and looking for discontinuities. In this example, the only discontinuity occurs at correction value equals zero and is identified on the right figure by the blue arrow. This gives an approximate value of the correction and identifies the two points that are equal after the correction is completed. Finally, we solve for the precise correction value using the equation on the bottom, which is derived from physiological principles. Real data sets are a bit more complex, but the process is still the same. This particular respirometry trial is for the oxygen minimum copepod megacalinus. Due to probe calibration error, there was negative oxygen concentrations recorded during the trial. As a consequence, the supply capacity appears very high and not very representative of the data. The discontinuity plot is provided on the right, and the correction value estimate is identified with the blue arrow. Once again, the precise value is calculated using the equation below once the two points that border that blue, the point where the blue arrow is, are identified. After the correction value identified by the equation on the previous slide was applied to each data point and the oxygen supply was recalculated, it provided a much better visual fit and match more closely with the field observations of copepod distribution within the oxygen minimum zone. Moreover, there are no longer any negative oxygen values reported, and so we are confident that at least part, if not all, of the variability caused by this error is accounted for. When the correction is applied to entire data sets, this is the result. The values here represent the mean of the 10 trials I analyzed, and the whiskers denote the 95% confidence interval. Many respirometry trials for this oxygen minimum zone species displayed, displayed evidence of calibration error, particularly negative oxygen. Therefore, this data set was a good candidate for the correction method. Because of divergence that can occur at low oxygen if there is calibration error, the uncorrected values range wildly and produce very low estimates of peak rate. After the effect of negative oxygen and its perturbation of alpha was accounted for, much of the variance between datasets was reduced because the randomizing effect of error was removed. Furthermore, the peak rate estimates derived from alpha match those calculated from other established methods such as the breakpoint method. I include the breakpoint method for comparison because it should not be as severely affected by small amounts of PO2 error, but unfortunately that method is not as grounded in physiological principles. While the differences in peak rate between the corrected and uncorrected data sets may be small on an absolute scale, 
That small difference is incredibly important when considering the ecology and biogeography of oxygen minimum zone species. And the figure on the left shows the oxygen profile for the copepods habitat. Below 400 meters, oxygen is very low and small vertical changes can mean the difference between life and death for this animal. Picard has standard for standard metabolic rate is useful when pre predicting the available habitat for a species because it provides a minimum oxygen value that must be present in the environment for the animal to sustainably live there. If the peak rate estimate is too low, we would predict that the species can inhabit much more of the water column than it actually can, or might be more resilient to increases in warming due to climate change. Reanalyzing data from another oxygen minimum zone copepod species found similar results. The uncorrected values are extremely variable, but the corrected values give more precise and realistic estimates of peak rate that are similar to existing methods and make the more sense in the animal's ecological context. Peak rate estimates post-correction or using a breakpoint method are almost 100% higher than those derived from uncorrected values. Finally, here are some additional preliminary data from juvenile pinfish that shows that correcting small amounts of oxygen measurement error can be also important for coastal species. As with the copepods, probe calibration error in some of the pinfish respirometry trials caused the observed oxygen supply to be very high, which in turn lowered the estimate of peak rate for standard metabolic rate. Robust peak rate estimations are critical for physiologically based range distribution models that use peak rate for standard metabolic rate to calculate available habitat. If peak rate for SMR is underestimated, animals that appear to be much more resilient to climate change and able to occupy a much greater geographic range. The principal conclusion of this work is that small amounts of oxygen probe calibration error are important when determining the oxygen supply capacity. If unaddressed, the estimate of supply capacity can be dramatically elevated and extremely variable which in turn affects the estimation of peak rate for standard metabolic rate. The corrections required to mitigate this error are typically very small, usually between 0.1 and 1% of the maximum value, and have a very large effect. This is within the probe's design specifications, and so even with best practices, you can still have an effective error. Additionally, this type of error is undiagnosed in other peak rate estimation methods, like the breakpoint method, that rely on regressions through different parts of the data and are not fixed with the zero intercept. Finally, this work is important as accurate determinations of the supply capacity and its use in calculating peak rate are critical for physiological drain distribution models that use these parameters to define met metabolically available habitat. Thank you very much, and now I'll open it up for questions.